hypnotherapists are my favorite people to talk to. We're deep. We're right? Deep. <laughs> yeah. We're deep. I fucking love it. Okay. So go ahead and tell us who you are. Um, welcome. Thank you. So my name is Crystal Merlin and I am a hypnotherapist. Um, I specialize in inner child work. i uh, just been kind of called to it. I think mostly because I've had to navigate my way through my own inner child struggles. Um, and I think that the way that the universe works is you make it through your own shit and then the universe brings you people to show them how to get through the same type of shit. So it just kind of happened that way. Um, I'm also into spirituality. Um, I practice shamanism. Um, so all that kind of stuff right now I am in between I am building my private practice and I work at a drug and alcohol um, rehab as a case manager and a group facilitator so tell me about that does your past involve drugs and alcohol yes substance abuse is a part of my past um, and it's a long generational um, thing that I had to break um, I used to tell myself, you know, um, my, my mother's a drug addict. And so I used to tell myself all the time, like, if drugs can make a mother leave their child, like, I'm never going to do those. I'm never going to do those. And lo and behold, your girl started partying a little too hard. Um, life kind of took a left turn for a minute. And thank God there was something inside of me that was like, this is not what you're here for. Like it was, and I read this book, um, that just happened upon me and it was many lives, many masters. Yeah. I got it right here. <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I'm like, I fucking knew it. I knew there was something else. I knew that there was like this greater thing. Cause I just felt like this lost, like broken, like floating, like person, you know, like the shell of a person, like not knowing who I was, not even knowing, you know no direction, no, like anything. And that book was just like, I knew it. And it kind of started me on my spiritual path. How long you been clean and sober? Five years. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. So I knew when I reached out to you, I was like, oh, total girl crush vibes. But now as we're talking, like, cause I see your stuff and I'm like, yes, yes. Check, check. Like and then I have a very similar past. I've been sober. This will be my 14th year. Oh, and my, wow. I have three kids and um, they were a big part of what helped me get sober pretty early on. But yeah. it can be devastating. It can be like for me, because I'm a, um, a zero to a thousand percent yeah. type of gal so it's like if mm -hmm. we're gonna do something I mean we're gonna do it big <laughs> all the way yeah <laughs> right yeah. so death I was like all. okay jail or death is really like what I'm coming up on those are yeah. my two options I'm looking at you know but thankfully yeah. I had my kids were real young and it was and thank god my husband didn't leave me because it was and uh, yeah. I was able to kind of get my shit together and that's a part I've thought about working with that community just because it's so near and dear to my heart. When I mm -hmm. hear of like someone else, like only if you have been there in the depths of an addiction, of can hell. you totally, yeah. can you meet another person at that level? Right. Yeah. So yeah. I thought about going into that work just so that I can mirror that back to them. And then also you hold a mirror saying like, it's possible. It's possible to get clean. It's possible yeah. to live a healthy, happy, functional life. You know, you show them like what's possible if they can navigate this. Well, that's really the basis of like the whole program. So like, I'm not a member of the program. Um, like I said, I do, I do my own spiritual practices. Um, like I'm into shamanism and, and that keeps me clean, you know, but um, really it's just about showing up for somebody else getting outside of yourself right and living being a living example so telling other people your story and then them seeing you now and they're just like it gives them hope that whole program is just run on hope you know um I think that 
I love, well, I love working there, right? I've been there for almost a year and a half at this rehab that I'm at. And I feel like the more work I started to do on myself, like all the shadow work I do and all, all my inner child healing and stuff like that, I know that my vibration has like risen above that type of like milieu. So yes, I still love them. Yes, I'm still passionate about helping just people in general. But I think that that was really like a, a launching pad for me, um, mm. for me to kind of, you know, I was still in that like lower vibration, even though I was transforming and changing parts of my life. And I feel like now I want to help a different type of person. I want to help people that want to help themselves. So not everybody that's in rehab is there because they have this like grand idea to like change their life. You know, it's probably like one in 15, 20 people that actually go through the doors that are like, yes, I want this, you know? And sometimes it's really just about not knowing you want it until you have that mental shift. And then you're like, okay, I think I can see a life outside of this. And then you start to want it. So I'm there, we're at a 30 day program. So 30 days is like enough time for like the snap of a mental shift. It's like not- right enough time to really shift anything, you know? Do you do any hypnotherapy with them or is it different tools? Um, so I do, I do one group at the outpatient, um, that we call in quotes guided meditation. So I use hypnotic techniques and I take them on visual journeys and stuff like that. So I do one group, but the other groups that I do are, um, like a literature group on the four agreements, which is also right up my alley. That's incredible. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's, it's fun. I, I like it. I bet you're like their favorite man case manager. Um, yes, yeah, so it's me and one other guy and we're like partners. Um, okay. but yeah, I, I talk to them. I'm the spiritual one. Yeah. So everyone there is like, Hey, hey, hey 12 steps. And I do preach that because in the beginning, it's really important. I feel like to get back to spiritual basics. Right. Yeah. But um, I'm the one that's like energy, vibration, uh, you know, manifestation, affirmations. So I'm definitely bring a different vibe to the place. (laughs) I think what's really important too is like you're planting those seeds. Because I remember like people would plant seeds. I used AA for I think like two years Mm -hmm. when I got sober and I kind of got my legs straight. Like because I didn't even know how to live like a sober woman. You know, I needed handholding. I needed help. And then I did all the steps you know, Mm -hmm. and that really helped me kind of like just clean out the junk so that I could learn to be a sober woman. Um, but people would like, I think along the way, like planted these seeds that like didn't germinate until like five years later. And I'll be like, holy shit, that's the book they were talking about, or that's what they were telling me. But like, I wasn't there. My capacity wasn't there yet. Yeah. So I like to think of like, you're planting all these seeds and you may never see these people again to like see them come to fruition, but you yeah. don't know, like a decade from now, they can be thinking back at like Crystal spoke this into me at that rehab. And now they're like flourishing and they're helping others. And like, we just can't see, but like, we have to know that like, that's what we're doing, especially in the environment that you work in. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I I think back and like, I still have little sayings in my head from like AA or from like, you know, um, my case managers, stuff like that, that like still ring true. And I use them because it's really about what we tell ourselves. Right. And we know that from hypnotherapy, it's really about what we tell ourselves. So, you know, I think that I think, I mean, I know you're right about the seeds, you know, I know you're right. And I wish that I was able to see them longer down the road just to kind of like reaffirm that this is what's going on. And I feel like there's so much that I want to like tell them. Sometimes I just want to shake them. Yeah. (laughs) But there's so much that I want to like explain. But then when I think about it, it's like this, all of this stuff that I know is years and years and years of me just going down rabbit holes. But because I was hungry for the information, you know, I wanted it. And I think that that plays a big factor too. So it's like, yeah, I can be planting these seeds, but they might take years and years to like germinate, you know? Yeah. Depending where they are on like the consciousness level and the healing level. And I I know, cause when you're in addiction, like you were talking about, like, you know, you've elevated your vibration, like, but when Mm -hmm. you're in addiction, like you're, you're pretty low. 
Yeah. So even if these seeds come in, like you can't grab them, like there's nowhere to integrate, right? They just kind of stay. And then yeah. as they elevate, I think they'll be able to get to what you had planted. And then if they keep going, which is, we're living proof of that. I love to share my story. I don't talk about it nearly enough. I'll drop it in now and again, but it's part of who I am. I just, I've changed identity so many times that like, when I look back, it's so far away you yeah. know, from, from who I've become, I'm sure in the last five years, like you're a completely different person, right? There might be yeah. elements of you that have always stayed the same, but as far as, you know, who you are, you're different. Yeah. I literally just posted something this morning about like, sometimes I sit and reflect and I look back and like, the only way to really tell how far we've come is to look back at where we've been, you know, and like, you know, every year, November 1st, I take like the whole day and just like reflect and I do like, you know, self-care practices and just like things that are kind for myself. And I look back and I'm like, wow, like five years ago I was here, you know, four years ago I was here. Like, and it's just a constant reminder that like so much can happen in a year. Like it's insane. Right. But everything starts with that first step, like that first wanting to do something different. Sometimes, you know, we have that enemy of comparison thing, just a natural human thing. Right. And I'm like, I went to school with her. Like, why am I not as far as she is or why? And, and I have to really check myself because it's like, my journey was just a little bit different. You know, I wasn't ready at that point that I graduated to really put myself out there. Like I still had basic needs that I needed to make sure we're met, like, you know, stable housing and a car that like works, you know, I think when I went to HMI, I was one year clean. Mm. Yeah. So I was one year clean. And I mean, I just, I was just figuring out who I was, you know, and I think HMI changed my life for sure. Because try to understand how other people's mind works. I was like literally sitting in class, like they're talking to me. I know they're talking about my brain. Like <laughs> they're talking about, you know. How did you was, even get there? Okay, so that is the universe. So um, I attempted one time HMI when I was not in a good mental state. Yeah. <laughs> I was using, right? Um, I don't know how I saw it or came about it. I just knew that I was stuck in this cycle and I wanted to do something different with my life but I was, I was trapped in the cycle. And so I went to the school, I attempted to go to the school. I couldn't stay awake. It was like falling asleep in class. And the guy pulled me aside and was like, Hey, you know, I don't know if this is a good fit for you right now. And I just remember breaking down in his office, like just crying my eyes out. Right. And I was like, I just want to do something different with my life, you know? And he's like, listen, I know the state that you're in, you know, he's like, I'm also in the program. And when you get a year clean, please, please come back and see us. So another, what, like two years goes by, two, three years goes by. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm clean. I enrolled in West LA college. I'm like taking like basic courses. I'm like trying to figure out what I want to do with my life. And I get an email from HMI, like random, haven't got an email from them in forever. Right? I get this random email and I'm like, okay, universe, I see you. Like, I see what you're doing. Next day, I called him up and was like, hey, I want to come see the school. Made sure I went into that guy's office and was like, do you remember me? And he was like, no. And I was like, yeah, I remember I was the girl that was like falling asleep and like couldn't stay awake. And he was like, oh my God, night and day, right? And um, yeah, then I, I breezed through HMI. The universe knows what it's doing, right? All the time, so... That's so awesome. I kept like getting the, I, I did a lot of like hypnotic practices in my own healing. Mm -hmm. And then I kept getting these, like, um, it was coming in like, and you know, on the one oh one they have that sign. Yeah. Right? The, the HMI yeah. sign. And I kept mm -hmm. fucking seeing the sign. And I was like, I told my husband, I'm like, honey, I think I'm supposed to go to hypnotherapy school. <laughs> and I just kind of like, let it, you know, I looked at the website and then I just kind of let it go. And then like, it just kept coming. And I was yeah. like, did okay, you go there too? Yes. Oh, okay, cool, cool. I thought yes. you just like knew about it. I was like, yeah. <laughs> nice. No, that's how I recognized all your uh, certificates <laughs> on the wall. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So cool. I watch your page too. And I'm like, I love everything that you're doing. And like, 
I'm just a big fan of anybody who is helping people for one, but I think hypnotherapy is like, it's really kind of coming to form. I think becoming um, bigger, right. Yeah. Um, More people are becoming aware of like what it is. And it's not kind of like this taboo, like thing that people see in the movies. Um, But I watched, you know, some of your posts and your stories and I'm like, literally you're like one step ahead of me I'm working on the the course remember I messaged you you put out the course four weeks this price I'm like girlfriend I'm literally doing the same thing right now so um and I had some issues right now with my living situation so that kind of got put set back for a second but I'm hoping to release the program at the end of May Mm, good yeah what is it I so I put it out there you saw and then I realized I, I don't have the capacity to hold it. Like I got a download, right? I woke up and mm-hmm. I was like, okay, this is what we're doing. This is the program. And I put it out there and then I could feel like, wait, I didn't, I didn't have like the energetic capacity to hold it. So it's like, I, I pulled it back in uh-huh. and, it, and I'm going to, I'm going to do it at a later time. But like, that was a neat lesson for me to learn too. Like just cause an idea drops in. Yeah. Like maybe, you know, maybe it has to marinate for a little bit, or I have, I have got three kids. So I run a business, I run a household, I'm married, you know, so I have to, I'm a man, a manifesting generator. I don't know if you do human design, but that's like, I can, you know, I can do a lot of things at once. I'm high energy, Mm -hmm. but, uh, sometimes I get like too, too much on my plate. So navigating that as far as like, so it's something I want to do, but I pulled it back Okay. and I'm going to release it because I have a current group program I'm already in right now. So, and then I see all my clients and then, so yeah, yeah, managing that. Well, that was a good, that's a good, um, awareness, right. To be aware of where we're putting our energy. If we have the time to put our energy there, if just because we're called to do it, is it the right time is the right situation? Totally. What is your program going to be? So I'm doing the, um, sacred soul. So it's like a inward dive, um, basically generational trauma, inner child healing, a little bit of cord cutting and kind of releasing stuff that's not ours. And then coming in the last one, I'm working on the module still, but it's like coming into who you want to be, like who you were always meant to be, right? That inner like awareness of self. So pretty exciting stuff. Is it a course or is it like group hypnosis? So it's, it's a little bit of both. So it's going to be four weeks and, um, you know, kind of just a little bit, I mean, you, you're like, Hey, you want to do this generational trauma hypnosis? People are like, what the hell is that? So it's a little bit about like generational trauma, like what it is, how, how it works, how, um, we could possibly be holding things that don't belong to us in our body, stuff like that. And then we'll do a hypnosis. Mm. And then the same thing with the inner child. So like inner child healing, like what are some of the experiences you had in childhood? Like, how do you feel like they're playing a role in your behaviors, in your lifestyle and your thinking patterns? And then, you know, a gentle meeting of the inner child. So it's kind of like an introduction to a way larger topic. Yeah. I kind of wanted to do an introduction to just like put it out there. I have so many clients that are coming to me for inner child stuff. It's like every single client is inner child. But that's what you're passionate about, right? It is. Yeah. And I feel like too, it's like, um, you know, I don't know how many clients you have that come to you with like the root problem of like, I'm not good enough. Right. It seems like everything stems from that idea of self. So all of my clients, most of them don't ever come and say that, but that's yeah. always the issue. Yeah. Yeah. They don't you say, know? they don't say the word specifically, but that is, yeah. yeah. And so it, we mm-hmm. always, everything I do is always uh, like boosted with, with self-worth and confidence. Like all of my sessions mm-hmm. always have that like worthiness, deservingness intertwined mm-hmm. into it, whatever they've come to work on. But I chose when I went to HMI, I knew you can use it for anything. Like it's, I'm so excited to be part of the conversation and I'm sure you are too, that like is changing how people view hypnosis. Yeah. You know, I'll have new clients and they're like, oh my God, this isn't anything like that I thought it was. Or like, I just led a group. um, I was a guest in someone's program Mm -hmm. and I led a wealth activation for a group of ladies. Yeah. And they were like, 
wow, I had no idea that like this, this is what it was, right? They have like the entertainment version, or yeah. the carnival version. And yeah. I'm so honored to be a part of the conversation of like letting women know, like, that's not what it is. And you act like actually can use this to reprogram yourself and change your life. Like totally. getting it out there, right? More mainstream. Yeah. Um, but they, at the root of everyone's issue, it's always self-worth. But my, when I, when I studied this, my whole thing was like, I'm using it strictly to, to help empower women. You know, you can Same. stop by near nails and, you know, all the different things like, but it was like, yeah. that's what I was honing in on. Like, how can I use this to help women? Like Same. change, right? Yeah. I was like other women, I want to help other women. And I think mainly because I wish that I would have found somebody, I wish that I would have found me, mm. you know, five, six years ago, somebody that would have been like, listen, like it's, it really stems down to the way that you think about yourself, the way that you feel about yourself, you know? And I mean, I wouldn't be where I'm at if I didn't, you know, do find everything out kind of like for myself and go through down the rabbit holes and go through all of the the hard stuff, like looking at all that sticky stuff that nobody wants to look at. Right. Um, and it wasn't until I think I understood like duality, mm. right. There's no light without the dark, no dark without the light kind of thing. Um, that I really was able to like accept myself as a whole. And I think that as soon as I was able to do that, I was like, okay, I'm ready to help other women. Like I'm yeah. ready. I have, I have some stuff to like, explain I've been through some stuff and came out on the other side you can't really do it when you're still in that sticky stuff yeah I I like to share a lot of like what I've integrated and what I know and then I also like to share like in real time like mm -hmm. my journey of like this is what I'm actively doing like I'll and work, work through some stuff and I'll jump on like a live or like I'll do a quick video on like this came up because it, it's the practice right we when you yeah. learn these tools so it's like some stickiness came up for me and this is what I did to navigate and then I share that so it's like real time happening to me but then it's yeah. like it's also wisdom for maybe someone who doesn't know or have or utilize that tool yeah, you know that then they can see like how we navigate when stickiness comes up because it will always come up as you know you're a human being. Yeah, and that's what that's what speaking to your humanness I think is really what attracts people. Like, oh, she's not just trying to like sell me something, or you know, she's not just trying to promote her business or something like that. It's like she's a real person that goes through real shit, and yeah. then people see that. Oh, and she this is how she's dealing with it. This is how she's getting out of it and people can relate to the humanness yeah tell me I saw that you like take people on journeys through the Akashic Records yeah so I did do a workshop um it was like a two-hour workshop and it was um just like a generalized kind of and you know when you're not doing spoken hypnosis and you have like a, a kind of a massive group of people um their mind can really take them anywhere. It takes them exactly where they need to go. So some people were able to follow along on the whole Akashic journey. And some people's minds were just like, you know, off showing them other things that they needed to see at, at that time. Was um, this virtual or in person? It was virtual. Okay. Yeah, it was virtual. Um, but it was fun. I, they had a lot of um, a lot of good outcomes. And then I think people shared after and it was really cool to see how so many of the people had like similar things come up. And for me, it was like, it like peaked a curiosity is like, oh, if everybody's like tapped into the same like space in the same time, like, are they connecting in their like, higher like their mm. higher realms like are they connecting kind of like their experience so that was a cool that was a cool kind of question that I came out of it with I think the other two is the people that that gravitated to you for that workshop like how their soul connected like yeah same time same place in your community and that that period of time like there's yeah. got to be a connection there that's not random right you know well, my idea of bigger picture is really like I think of like a spider web, I guess, right? So like everything is connected by these like invisible threads, like every experience, every feeling, every right. We're living in this matrix that's like a spider web. 
So I think that obviously, there, I mean, I know that there's no coincidences or accidents. So everybody that came together at the same time in the same place for the same purpose, it's not an accident, right? So everybody's kind of like woven into this spider web of right. experiences. Were you spiritual before you were using? Um, so I've always been into like crystals and everything really like metaphysical, like everything unseen. It was always this big question, you know, astrology and Zodiac, all this, all that stuff. But I think that I got really spiritual. There was this shift. Um, the last time that I was in treatment about like three months in when I was just like, this whole experience is a gift. I would stop thinking of like a punishment, right? And I was just like, this is all a gift. And the more that I started thinking about things as a gift, the more I started to receive gifts and things to be grateful for. And that's when I sort of really dove into like, I read stuff about alchemy and I'm really, I'm really tied to like ancient Egypt and like their practices. And I like magic and, you know, as above, so below. And, um, I'm into, I just kind of wherever my interest was peaked, I just followed the path. And I was like, oh, a book. Oh, you know, an audio book. Oh, some internet articles. Oh, some YouTube videos. And I remember I, when I first started um, going to school and working again, um, I was so busy and I had cut off, you know, obviously all my old friends and I didn't really have any new friends yet. And so on my day off, all I would do was watch YouTube on the TV and I would just go down these rabbit holes, Every anything that I didn't understand that they were talking about in the video, I would take notes and that would be like my next video and my next video. And I would literally like it, five, six, seven hours would go by and I'd be like, oh my God, it's time to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was always very like spiritual minded from the beginning, like uh -huh. from birth on. And I wonder, because I wonder how that played into like, using drugs and alcohol because it does mm -hmm. it takes you kind of out of this 3d reality right yeah. and into another one and i know that it's part like dysfunctional family i know that i wasn't provided like healthy tools to navigate you know yeah um, i know that's part of it but i also think that there's something to being spiritual minded and maybe having the personalities like we do that we go that route because yeah there it's a journey it's definitely a journey it is. And if you, well, if you think about like our higher essence, right? Like our higher self um, and past life and all that kind of stuff, we picked all of the lessons that we came here to learn. So we picked our parents, you know, whether they were absent or there, or they divorced or, you know, they were abusive is like our soul, our higher essence, our higher knowing picked these specific parents in these specific situations for our soul to remember. Ultimately, we're here to remember. And when we're kids, yeah, we don't know how to deal with our emotions or our feelings. We don't know who we are. We're still trying to figure all that stuff out. And so as we start to learn all of these things, all of these behaviors that we just mirror from the people who are raising us and our, the people around us, we learn all of these things. And then when we get to a point where we dive into our spirituality, right? Like, who am I really? And then the rest of the journey is really about unlearning all of those things. So unlearning all of those things and, and going back to your true essence, who are you at your core? What is your soul here to do? And I think that a lot of people are looking for purpose and direction and clarity because they don't know what their soul is here to do, right? They just use all of these experiences and hang on to them. We're not supposed to hang on to all of these painful experiences we're supposed to learn from them and turn them into wisdom and what was this supposed to teach me yeah it hurt or you know my mom left me when I was two years old she dropped me off on a porch and never came back so it took me years and years and years to let go of that um that victim mentality you know yeah. that's not who I am that's just something that I that I went through yeah. Tell me about, uh, so you do past life regressions with clients. Yeah. Um, I'm super into past life regression. Um, that's something that I've kind of always been into and wondered about, like, yeah. you know, before, um, addiction and stuff like that, I would read up on that kind of stuff or like 
kids that remember their, you know, past lives or when there's, you know, two, three years old, they're barely talking. They're like, oh, my other family. And you're like, parents are like, what? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so past life regression is a tool. Um, we carry things over with us from other lifetimes, lessons that maybe we didn't learn in that lifetime or we weren't able to grasp. And our soul goes, okay, here we go. We're going to try it again, right? And so your higher essence picks a new body and a new family and, you know, new experiences for you to try to learn the same lesson. And if you think about it in the terms of like relationships, so like if you're dating a guy, right? And he's, he's a dick and you finally break up with him, the relationship's toxic. You find a new guy with a different face, but it's the same relationship because we're supposed to learn these certain lessons and it's the same thing with lifetimes so I like to go into a past life and the mind and connect whatever happened in that past life with whatever's going on in this life and then you ask you know the subconscious if it's if the lesson is learned if it's okay to release that karma and Mm. most of the time the people say yes is that what you specialize in? I saw child, uh, inner child healing, the past life, and then the generational yeah. trauma. Is that? Yeah. So, so I do the past life, um, the inner child healing, and I do like sacred woman embodiment. So like divine feminine um, principles, kind of like um, getting into the, the sacred woman basically who, who we are at our core without all those beliefs about ourselves. Is that like a hypnotic experience, like through hypnosis or that's a different practice? No. So it, yeah, it's through hypnosis. So it's, it's just geared in a different kind of direction, I guess. So inner child healing is one thing. Past life regression is one thing. And then the sacred woman embodiment is, is like something else. We talk a lot about self-love practices and things that you can do in your daily life. It's, it's kind of tied in with a hypnosis, but it's more kind of like a coaching thing as well. Did you create that? Cause I don't, that wasn't taught in our school. Yeah. That's my own thing. That's purely from my own experiences. And it has a lot to do with my like shamanic practices. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of shadow work and we do a lot of, um, kind of just opening of the heart space, letting the ego die like over and over and living from the heart, everything from the heart. What do you, are you working with a shaman? Yeah. So, um, my spiritual teacher is a shaman and I've been part of a medicine circle for a little over a year now. And so we meet, um, every other week, uh, we have a group for medicine circle is what we call it for like four hours. Mm -hmm. So it's my, it's my church pretty much. Wow. Is that something yeah. you pay, you pay to be a part of? Um, so it's a closed circle. Um, and again, the universe, the way I came into that, but, um, it's a closed circle and we do do an exchange because of the work that my teacher puts into the group before we come. Um, it's a small exchange. It's nothing like over the top, super affordable. Um, one of the therapists at my work at the rehab, um, she had sage and oils and crystals on her desk. And I walked by one day and I was like, friend. Ah! <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so we started talking and I was explaining to her a little bit about, you know, like my journey and, and kind of what I was telling you about how I just follow wherever my interest is. And I was like, I'm really into like shamanism and like the earth and, you know, herbs and oils and minerals. And she's like, oh, I have somebody for you to talk to. And she's like, call this lady. And in my head, I'm like, what am I, who is this lady? What am I going to tell her? (laughs) I was going to call her. So I just called her and I was like, Hey, um, you know, Cheryl told me to call you. And we ended up on the phone for like an hour and a half. And she's like, well, if you want to come, um, I'd love to meet you in person. And then I went to her house and I met her and I was there for like three hours. And her house is like the temple of curiosities. So there is like, just every kind of goddess and um, every mineral you can imagine and just plants. She has this amazing garden and like 
drums and just all kinds of stuff. And um, so literally, I think I've been there for about a year and I still don't think I've seen everything in the house. <laughs> it's amazing. But we started that talking, incredible. We talking for like three hours. Yeah, no, it, it's like, literally, I still find stuff every time I go. I'm like, oh my God, this is cool. Was this here before? <laughs> yeah. Um, and so she does energy work as well. So she did a really long, um, energy healing on me, um, mm -hmm. cleared like all my chakras explained to me what everything was and why it might've been held there in my body. And I was like, okay, I can do this. My first couple circles, they're like drumming and singing and chanting. And I'm like, where am I? What am I doing? But something inside me was like, just stay like this this feeling like inside of me was like, just stay. So after about a month, I was like, okay, I think these are my people. And a year and a half later, my, like just this year and a half, my life has changed so much. It's insane. Like how much stuff I was holding in my body that was preventing me from moving forward in my life. And I'm just feeling called to do hyp hypnotherapy like full-time I love it I'm passionate about it um, I love helping people that are seeking out help for themselves you know um, and really just holding the mirror for these people for these people you know and um, I think that you know I have some amazing stuff that I'm working on so it's just really about getting there how do you how do you grow your business um, so right now it's all through social media um, which I am trying to be more consistent on. It's hard when I work during the week and then I have clients. So, but um, I mean, it's growing. Literally clients are coming from past clients and um, about you and I'm doing a little bit of marketing on social media as well. So, I mean, right now it's, it's, a sl it's kind of a slow trickle, but it's the clients are, are coming in consistently. So I'm excited about it. What's yeah. your vision for your business? Um, I want to, I want to do some live courses. I like the group healing idea. Um, and then I like, I like one-on-one -on -one clients as well. So, I mean, I don't know. The vision is, it's grand. You know, I've written some things down in my manifestation journal and you know, some monetary amounts I'm trying to get to, but there's also some energetic goals. Like, you know, I want to reach this many people so that this many people can ripple out into this many people kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. Do you want to share your grand vision so you can <laughs> hold it and feed it? Yeah, sure. So I really just want to work for myself full time, right? Um, I want to have the freedom and the flexibility to travel. Um, I want to receive downloads from, you know, the universe, what I feel called to present at that time. And I want to, you know, give courses online. I want to speak on podcasts I want to speak in front of people um, and really just, I mean, I, I want to be somebody who's recognized for my work. I think that's that's my ultimate goal I want to be I want to be like oh that's crystal the hypnotherapist like I want people to know who I am based on the work that I do that's, that's beautiful that's really my my goal <laughs> yeah good there's so much power when we speak it into existence right so if you're journaling it or you're keeping it here but yeah. speaking it out, there's so much power that you just like transmuted and you spoke it into existence. So all the pieces are coming together yep. and in just a short period of time, that will be your reality. Yeah, I believe it. I think that my life really started to change when I opened my heart space, when I, mm. when I let down the walls that I had built up around my heart and self-preservation you know, for so many years of just like being this hurt, like wounded person and keeping an arm dis arms distance from everybody, like not wanting anybody to get close enough to hurt me. Um, and I think when I let the walls down is when my life really just started to open up. That's incredible. I think that's like medicine for every human. I think no yeah. matter like where you are in life, like that's the answer. Heart space. And just 
right? And just allowing all that, the walls to just completely melt. When I do like the, um, what is it? The progressive, mm -hmm. you know, I always stop at the heart. Me too. And allow, and, and right. I'm opening and melting the wall, all that always like, cause Me every too. human can, every human can use that. Right. And yeah. I was like, just, you know, just soften into like forgiveness and allow, cause if you, you don't have to do anything. It's really like in the removing of the walls, like the heart is, it, it's already radiating and pulsating. It's just like the blockages that we put there. So if we can remove the blockages, like the heart is already doing its thing. You know, yeah. you don't have to do anything to that energy. It's already powerful. It's just that we've like cut ourselves off from, from that power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like melting away the blocks and like, yeah. then it can just radiate further. Cause you know about, you know, the heart math and like, I, I forget the measurement, but it radiates like feet out from the body. I don't know if it's like yeah. five feet or something like the electromagnetic field. Like it's a legit science. Like it's not just woo woo. Like there's actual, like you can measure. Wow. The I didn't know that. Yeah. No, not I'll about, not about how far it goes out. Yeah. I'll send you, um, a really reputable They It's called heart math. Okay. And they study, all they do is study the heart. Um, and it's power, but yeah, it's measurable. You can measure the heart frequency. I want to say like three to five feet away from the body. So if you imagine okay. when you like you walking around with your open heart, people are feeling that like it's yeah. going far past the human body. You're actually radiating that out into the space around you and people are responding to that. Yeah. I mean, that makes a lot of sense when you think about it. I think too, there's like there can be blockages around the heart, but I think that we also hold, you know, emotions that we haven't dealt with properly in mm. the body. So if you think about that in the terms of like a, an auric field, right. Where our whole body radiates out. Imagine like all the dings that we have in our auric fields or like maybe the holes or the areas that, you know, the energy isn't flowing properly. Right. What tools do you use on yourself and clients for that? releasing those. um so spoken hypnosis is my favorite which is why I, I love the one-on-ones when so, you say spoken is that like you're asking questions and they're speaking yeah. it back to you okay yeah so once we do like the progressive and um get them really kind of centered into you know into their their body I ask them to kind of do a body scan and navigate where they feel any tightness or anything and then you can ask them like what do they think it is the clients know all the answers to all of their questions. Yes, it's like the do. answer, right? The answers are already inside of them. It's just about helping them to see them. So I ask them, where do you feel any tension? Where do you feel tight? Like, what do you think that is? You know, and then I also know about the body, the left side, the right side, feminine, masculine, you know, where you're holding anger, where you're holding love. Do you have any pain in your body? What side is the pain on? So there's all these indicators that we can use, Right. But it's just, the, I mean, the mind can literally heal the body. There's so yeah. many studies on it, right? So if you send the energy, you know, in your mind to that area and you do some kind of like, you know, use this golden orb of light to kind of melt away, like whatever it is, the anxiety, the tension, just picture this black sticky substance, like melt, uh, melting away, right? And then you can use the orb to kind of vacuum it out. And so they're doing these, these visuals in their mind, right? And the mind is actually healing the body. Hmm. That's so awesome. Yeah. Is that something different that you do with clients or that you add into your hypnosis? Uh, most of the time, I just, after the progressive, I just kind of do a double check of the body and just see if they're holding anything and because a lot of my belief system, my practices are energetic. So everything like energetic. So I do like, you know, the body check and make sure, you know, anything, if they're coming to me for anxiety, obviously I know the focus is going to be down like in the stomach, you know, so we do just like a little bit of extra clearing out before we get into the actual hypnosis. It's just part of what I kind of incorporate. That's incredible. Yeah. What are, what are some of your practices? What do you, um, what do you find that you use like most in your sessions? Um, so 
I find a lot of success with the control room mm. with them being able to like, I think it, it puts them back in the power seat, right? They, yes. they put them back in the control, right? Cause I'm running a, um, a group hypnosis right now. And we just did that last week was um, being able to access the lovers or the switches for whatever you want, you know, but creating that. Yeah. And once you create it, like once they experience it once with you, they can recreate it. And I also say that in hypnosis, like now yeah. that you've accessed it, you've been to this control room of the mind, you can come here whenever, you know, yeah. and adjust if you ever feel like your energy or your, you know, metabolism or like whatever it is, is needs an adjustment, you know, yeah. that you can access this place again. So I find a lot a lot of success with the control room, just because so many people, they feel out of control. I yeah. find that like they come to us because they feel like they're not in control. So like, you know, all my clients are women and it's mm -hmm. all um, worth, confidence, body image, um, some inner child stuff. Like it's all things in the way of them really being their true self you know, yeah. again, it's like those blocks, right? So yeah. what I have found challenging is kind of what you talked about in the beginning about uh, generational trauma. I know exactly what that is, but yeah. if you're talking to a regular person that you want to bring into your uh, program that mm -hmm. isn't in our world, you know, yeah. spiritual or otherwise, they're going to be like, what? So figuring out how to like tailor or explain what yeah. I do and what you do in a way that like, just, and I say regular, but you know, someone who's not in this world be like, yeah. Oh, that could help me. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So that's something I've navigated. And I just hired, um, I just joined this like high level mastermind where like the whole thing is focused on like content and conversion and messaging and all that, because like, I have the skills, I have the know-how I have yeah. the passion, like I'm loaded up there. But like yeah. the translation, because I live in this world. Like you said, we're deep people. Yeah. We're deep, right? I hang out here. So if mm -hmm. someone is not deep and I'm talking, they're just like, what? Right? What do you say? Yeah. Exactly. So I love finding other women that like can meet me on this deep level. Mm -hmm. But my clients, most of them are not you and me. Yeah. You know, my clients are people that can use this medicine, but being able to like find the wording or the messaging so yeah. that they resonate and then come into my space. Like that's yeah. where my next kind of evolution and growth is in that piece of being an entrepreneur. Amazing. I love that. Yeah. I love that for you. Yeah. I feel like I asked a lot about um, family dynamics. And so it kind of gives me a sense right away of what they're dealing with. And if I hit on it, then I'm like, okay, well, this is how the brain has created this defense mechanism. And I explain defense mechanism to them and that mm. all the brain wants to do is keep the body safe. That's its number one job. And once you I feel like I explain that to people, people are like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I can see how that like, okay. And it kind of, yeah. I think when you leave them just with like an explanation that gives them some kind of hope that it is possible for them to heal through the, the method of hypnosis, I find that people are most likely like, yes, let's try it. Let's do it. And then, you know, obviously after one session, they're like, are we right? doing this again next week? Are yeah. we doing this again? <laughs> like, yes, <laughs> we are. <laughs> and the, the theory of mind, all my clients like that, they're like, oh my God, like they get it. Yeah. They all, everyone I've ever done it with, like pieces of the puzzle come together. They're like, holy shit. Cause when you explain, right, you've got the 10 and the 90 and the, like when you make a decision with your conscious mind, but you've got an opposing belief in the subconscious, I'm like, it's not happening. You're going to, yeah. you're going to be met with self-sabotage every single time. And I can just see like in their eyes, like, ah, oh, Right. The because they've been on. repeating these patterns for so many years. And once yeah. somebody, I come in with my whiteboard and my, my marker and I show yes. them why, and yeah, it's like that light bulb. And then I think there's also this feeling of like, okay, I'm not fucked up. You yeah. know, like when you understand like the dynamics of why something is happening, 
you don't feel so broken or like something's wrong with you, right? Because a lot of us will internalize, well, something's wrong with me. I can't figure it out or I can't fix it. But when totally. we come in as teachers and therapists and be like, okay, this is the dynamics at play. This is why it's not happening. Again, they come back and feel like, like empowered, right? With the yeah. control room or with the theory of mind. Like when you have the information, you're like, ah, and now you can navigate differently and probably see the result that you're looking for while feeling better about yourself in the process. Totally. Yeah. I, I don't, I think I, ex I explained theory of mind. I am not too fond of like drawing it out for them. I know um, a lot of other hypnotherapists do. Um, I just, I just, I don't, I just explain it, I guess, in a way. And then I also use, um, I, my talk is energy, right? So I talk energy. I talk about chords. I talk about connection. And so I feel like the, my clients that I've had so far, I can explain in a way that like, I don't want to say like layman's terms, but kind of like in a, in a way that they can understand if they're not into energy. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, I feel like it, it works for me. I do explain the theory of mind. I just don't draw it out. <laughs> yeah. I just don't I'm an artist it. and a writer. So it's very much like oh, part perfect. of my like way yep. of teaching. Yeah. So yeah. It just, it works very well. Yeah. But that light turning on is what it's so. And when they like, when they leave, like, I love being part of the conversation of like every single client I've had, they're like, hypnosis is not what I thought it was. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And then, you know, they, their return, not customers, but you know, repeat clients, right. They're like, yeah. Oh my God. And then I always teach them self-hypnosis because the idea is like, be with me for like a couple of sessions, let's get you on track, like with some foundational principles. Mm -hmm. And then here's how you can train your brain for whatever you'd like, right? And then I'm always here as a resource or if you want to tune up or whatever, but it's, yeah. it's that empowerment piece. Like that's the reason I do all of this is like, let me show you the way, let me help build your mm -hmm. foundation and then let me teach you. So like you have these tools for the rest of your life, right? How to drop in. And then rewire whatever it is that you're wanting, you know? Yeah, that empowerment piece is a strong component. That empowerment, mm -hmm. this is how you do it for yourself. Um, I do sometimes, like, if I'm doing a session that I know I'm not going to do, like, spoken hypnosis, I'm not going to ask questions, I'll record the session for the client as well. And then I'll send it to them and I'll be like, listen to this as much as you can every day, preferably right? For a week until we see each other again. And it's amazing to see how the clients come back the next week. Like you can kind of tell who's doing the work, and, and who's not, right? You can tell who's yeah. doing their own work and who's not. So one of the things I always tell them too, in the beginning is like, I'm not going to do this for you. Right. And so I'm like, this is going to take, I see you for one hour a week. You still have, you know, seven other, six other days, you know, that, you should be doing something for yourself if you really want to integrate this. Yeah. You know, if you want to make it worth it for yourself, I'm showing you how to do the work. And all I'm doing is giving your subconscious a nudge to help you in that direction, you know? Yeah. I tell I mean, all my clients, I'm like, hypnosis is, is fucking powerful, but I was mm -hmm. like, it's not a cure all. I was like, what I, what I uh, teach them is like, it's like a supportive team member. It's the team member that like you wish you could have, because if you're not, if you're working on everything else, but you're not doing anything that's tapping into the subconscious, yeah, you're, you're never going to get to where you're wanting. Right. So like, it's a very necessary, valuable team member. I'm like, but it's not it, right. If you're wanting this change, like it's there to support you and get you there, but you have to take action. You're going to have yeah. to, to, you know, to do the tools and stuff. You're going to have to listen. You're going to have to change your beliefs. You're going to have to do, you know, a lot of other uh, practices that go with it. If you really want to like think and believe and act differently than you do, you got to change the life story, right? Do you do mental bank? I do it on my own. Yeah, me too. Okay. I do it on my own. I stopped for a while and I actually just picked it up like a couple months ago again. Yeah. So yeah, I'm doing mental bank for myself right now. I don't do any like wealth, um, you know, consciousness or anything like that. So, um, I don't, I don't really teach it to my clients cause there's not a need. 
Um, but I do a lot of like journaling exercises with my clients. Um, I teach them a lot of self-love practices and like rituals, you know, um, mm. taking a shower, you know, when you're washing your hair, I love my hair. I love my body. You know, when you're eating a healthy meal, like this is, I'm doing something kind for my body. I'm giving my body the nutrients that needs. like, turn your entire life into a self-love ritual. Yeah. Right? And, and the more that you're on it in the mind, the more the mind starts to ad- adopt that as the new normal. Right. So everything Absolutely. I'm doing is in, is in self-love and self-love. And then the more your brain is thinking about self-love, the more experiences are going to come to you to feel self-love. That's just how the universe works. Right. Yeah. So I, I do a lot of like, um, I hate calling it homework, but home exercises, right. Like journaling and self-love stuff. I, yeah. And that's necessary. Like I tell, I like highly encourage my clients. Like I always give them stuff to do. And it was like, mm-hmm. you don't have to do it, but it's an essential part of you making the necessary change. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, so it's like, it's like, you don't have to do it, but here's the tools. Like you just have to pick them up. You just have to use them. And yeah, I'm giving you the answer. Yeah, exactly. Right. But you have to do the work, you know, but thankfully most of the people that I like magnetize into my world are people that, that do the work and that want to change. So they're actually putting the practices and you can tell, and they swear by them and they're like, yeah, it's life-changing. And I'm like, absolutely. But again, well, that's tools for them to use like for, for the rest of their lives, you know, if they choose. Yeah. And I think that's the, that's the important thing about um, like energy exchange. So when someone is paying for a session, they're investing something into that, right? Which is like monetary, but they're investing something into that. And for most people, it's like when they have something on the line, they're more um, in tune to try to get everything that they can out of it. Yeah. Right. So that's the difference between me right now working at the rehab people that don't want to be there or they're there for court or they're there because their baby mother or their mom told them to, you know, go get their life together, whatever. So these people that are investing in themselves, Mm -hmm. they want the change. And I find that they're willing to do, you know, these little things that you ask them to do. But in return, it's really just doing stuff for themselves. Right. So there's that, there's that exchange, um, you know, component. Yeah. That's incredible. Crystal, this was lovely. I'm so glad you said yes. And I'm so glad you're like a mile away so that we can go hike. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for having me on here. I'm blessings to you for that. Yeah. And I got to be your first. I'm so honored. Yes. You broke my podcast cherry. Yes. (laughs) There's going to be many, many, many many, many more. Awesome. Well, I hope you have a great day. Okay. You too. We'll talk soon. Okay. Bye city. Okay. Bye.